Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Friday, December 1st. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal. The rise of generative artificial intelligence chatbots has paved the way for a new kind of tech job, prompt engineer. And like many roles in the industry, it brings in a pretty penny. If you've come across this title on job search sites and have been wondering what applying for it is like, well, our senior personal tech columnist, Joanna Stern, did just that. And she's with me now to tell us about her experience. Joanna, start by explaining to us what is a prompt engineer? Well, a prompt engineer is somebody who writes prompts, the words that go into a system like ChatGPT or BARD, and writes them in a way that makes the systems deliver the best result. And really, one of the best ways I heard it described is it's programming, but in the English language. You're using those words to get the best out of these AI systems. And the question I'm sure a lot of people are wondering is, how much does this job pay? As you said, I applied. And if you could see me right now, you'd see me doing air quotes because this company was in on it. The company's name is Hevia. They're an AI startup in New York City. And they told me that this job could go up to $250,000 a year. And also when I searched on LinkedIn and Indeed, I saw thousands of listings for this type of job where the pay range was between $100,000 to $200,000. So you're definitely hitting six figures with this job. Okay, so then how did you prepare to apply for this job? My idea here really was to better understand this job. Let me try to go apply to one of them and get a better sense of what this job really is. And then also I decided to take a course, a Coursera class on prompt engineering. And it is taught by a wonderful professor named Jules White. And he, in his day job, is an associate computer science professor at Vanderbilt University. And as you were taking those classes, did you learn anything about this role that surprised you? Yeah, one of the things that I really learned from the course, and it's a six-week course, but what the professor does is take you basically through these different types of prompts, ways of talking to the chatbot to elicit the best response. Basically, the idea is that if you tweak the input that you're putting into ChatGPT or one of these other large language models, you're going to get the best output. And so they teach a few different approaches. For instance, one of them is called the persona prompt. And that's when you're basically telling the AI system to assume a role, a persona. For instance, act as an assistant helping a financial analyst. And so then when you ask a question, the bot will frame that response in that role. There's also one called the new information prompt. Some of these large language models have only been programmed on data up to a certain time. So with this, you can feed it some new information, copy and paste, say, an earnings transcript, and say, here's a transcript of Microsoft's last earnings call. Summarize all the mentions of AI and Bing in five bullets. What was the application process like? Did you have to take a test of some sort? So as I said, the company was in on this, but they did give me a test that they tend to give many prompt engineers that are coming into interview. And Hevia, this company, makes a tool called Matrix, and it allows financial institutions and other businesses to analyze huge amounts of documents, contracts, filings, earnings transcripts. And instead of a person sifting through this, AI helps you. It can summarize and pull out key points. So they had me write some of the prompts that one of their clients might want. And specifically, they had structured this around Microsoft earnings. The AI system has the latest Microsoft earnings transcript call in it. I was then tasked with writing some prompts around Microsoft earnings, knowing what kind of data you might want to pull out from that kind of call. And so I was really pretty good at that. I've listened to my fair share of earnings calls. So I was, you know, I would say past that part of the test. But then it turned out that they also, for this type of role, really did want to have somebody who has some knowledge, at least a a level of uh, proficiency in coding. So that's where I fell short. So does that mean you did not get the job at this company? I'm sorry to say to everyone on this podcast, I am still a columnist at the Wall Street Journal. I did not get this job as a prompt engineer. But I would say that I learned a ton about how important it is to have the skills of a prompt engineer in pretty much most jobs now that are going to be interacting with these AI chatbots. And especially through the Coursera class, I learned quite a few prompts and ways of interacting and typing into these systems that will benefit me in my day job. So you're stuck with me. I'm sure the journal is glad that you're sticking with us. 
So Joanna, does this mean that prompt engineering is a job that's going to be staying with us for a while? Certainly the people I spoke to say prompt engineering is here to stay. And it is certainly going to be a job over the next couple of years. But what I really think it is, is a skill. And I think we're going to see more and more people adding this to their resume saying proficient in prompt engineering, because it might not be your sole job, but you might have another job where you do need to interact with these AI chatbots and lean on the chatbots for summarizing or just making you more efficient at your job. And you're going to want to have these prompts. You're going to want to know how to communicate with these systems in the most efficient way possible. That was our senior personal tech columnist, Joanna Stern. And that's it for Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by me, Julie Chang. We had additional support this week from Anthony Bancy. Our supervising producer is Melanie Roy. Our development producer is Aisha Al-Muslim. Our deputy editors are Scott Salloway and Chris Zinsley. And Falana Patterson is the Wall Street Journal's head of news audio. We'll be back with a new show on Monday. Thanks for listening and have a good weekend.